Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dr. Joy podcast. Dr. Joy, good morning. Greetings. Thank you. Liv. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. My name is Gary Metzger. I'm a professor of journalism at California State University, Long Beach. And it is always my joy once a week to grill Dr. Joy and get <laughs> his comments and impressions on joy the joy score app and any topic that comes to my mind and i love to see how quickly dr joy reacts to what i have to talk about sounds good and today i would like to talk about the convergence of joy and hope now before you turn away from this podcast and before you turn off youtube and go to another channel I bet you're thinking that, oh my goodness, if we're going to talk about hope, then you have to talk about religion. And that isn't necessarily the case no. at all. No. Even though there is a component to hope and having faith in whatever you uh, want your powerful being to be, um, will be there for you to help you accomplish the things that you hope for. Um, in fact, being joyful in hope uh, means choosing faith in every situation with whatever higher being you choose to um, follow and talk to and and pray to. Uh, while we don't yet see what will happen in the future, we can hope for the best. And no matter what circumstance we encounter, um, we experience joy and hope because joy is based on a relationship with God, whatever God you choose to um, to pray to um, that that higher being offers us hope uh, and happiness comes and goes as our circumstances change so there's some research out there dr. joy that says um, to get that confluence of hope and joy a couple of things that you can do okay Think of a goal that you're aiming for and do one thing to get it started. Number two, share how you really feel with someone you trust and be willing to ask for help. And number three, smile and say something positive every time you walk into a room. We've discussed that before for yeah. sure. And finally, be as kind to yourself as you are to others. I mean, some of us even keep a, a, a book of gratitude of things yeah. that we're grateful. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what do you think about those goals? I think they're all very good. And uh, you were saying something about the religious component or how necessary it is. Yes. Or higher power or God. You know, if someone doesn't want that to be part of their thinking or approach, hope is a very common reality of human life. Without hope, you almost have no life, you know, because uh, I'll give you a simple example. So, um, Somebody approached us uh, who has 400 people who go into homes to help older people with their daily chores and things. It's called Home Help Program. There are 400 people. It's a huge network. And so the person who owns the company said, look, uh, Joy Score project and app can help my employees keep their stress within range or reduce the stress because it's a stressful job, you know. I say absolutely. So we kind of have simple techniques, not very complicated. We use things like uh, universal meditative breathing, you know, three, uh, seven, eight, and Breathing seems to really be instantaneous in terms of bringing you physiological change and your stress level. 
I mean, you do that three times and you can almost feel that there is a difference in, in you. We did that with Matt's company, you know, with his employees. And then he said, you know what? Not only uh, my employees, even our clients could benefit from it. Because they have, in some ways, lost hope in life. And this could bring that hope back because they can see a, a way to be able to improve their joy score. And I said, absolutely, you know, because hope is uh, almost motivational. When you have hope, your self-esteem uh, is impacted in a positive way. And you start doing all those things you mentioned, like four things, uh, to to improve the chance of success in what you're trying to achieve. So, I think, um, um, irrespective of age group, hope is very important for every human being. I think it's important, and I love that you mentioned irrespective of, of age group, yeah. because. Um, and everybody, a great website besides the Jewish Score app, of course. Um, there's a great uh, website called greatergood.berkeley.edu. They published um, some findings um, and talking about age groups and everything. Um, a study from Harvard University, someplace that you're familiar with, Dr. Julian. Yeah, yeah. Um, Harvard University's Human Flourishing Program. Uh, they recently uh, published a study. Researchers examined the impact of hope on nearly 13,000 people with an average age of 66. <laughs> okay. They found, Dr. Joy, those with more hope throughout their lives had better physical health, better health behaviors, better social support, and a longer life. Hope also led to fewer chronic health problems, less depression, less anxiety, and a lower risk of cancer. You know, that's very interesting because um, as you were talking about it, and, and I was going back to a few years ago when we had a little uh, informal uh, testing of uh, how and, and if there is a correlation between joy score and credit score. Now, there isn't anything like hope score, but I'm kind of uh, uh, thinking that if it was, I would say there is a correlation between hope score and joy score. Absolutely. Because when you were talking about it and how people are impacted in a positive way with hope. It's the same thing which is for joy. You know, I mean, we found in our research that all those areas are impacted with joy. So some ways I can see joy and hope having uh, very similar uh, realities of life. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, know? almost par parallel. Parallel, you know. Absolutely. So you could say, well, uh, you can't have joy without hope and you can't have hope without, without joy. Without joy, you know? exactly. So it's, it's a very easy uh, reality to, to capture. Uh, and and that, that, you know, I, I like uh, uh, what you research today because that's an area we haven't talked about. Exactly. Yeah. So let me take it one step farther for okay. you, okay? Uh -huh. So here's the question. So if maintaining hope in the long run is so good for us, how do we increase it? How do we build hope? Um, so here's four suggestions from this study from Harvard, your old stomping ground. Number one, attend a motivational speech or watch, read, or listen to one online. Or come to our YouTube channel, Dog on It, and watch us. We'll motivate you. <laughs> I'm feeling motivated. <laughs> there you see that? Thank you, Liv. So that's number one, Dr. Joy. Number two, engage with a religious or spiritual community. 
This has worked for millennia. Uh, amidst a community of like believers, people have drawn strength, found peace, and experienced the elevation of the human spirit just by knowing there is something or someone much larger than them. Number three, forgive. Participating in a forgiveness group or completing a forgiveness do-it-yourself workbook builds hope, say scientists. It also reduces depression and anxiety, two things which we know are usually right at the top yeah. of Google's most searched. searched. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, this will increase your capacity to forgive, um, even with long-held grudges and everything. Um, successfully forgiving someone provides a sense of both the willpower and way power to change. And number four, and this goes for me because I know who mine is. I'm looking at him right there. <laughs> Choose a hero of hope. Some have changed industries. Nelson Mandela endured 27 years of imprisonment. Franklin Delano Roosevelt brought hope to millions for a decade during the Great Depression. Um, Katherine Johnson. Now you're probably saying, who's Katherine Johnson? Did you ever see the movie Hidden Figures? Yeah. Katherine yeah. Johnson was a black mathematician who had a critical role in the success of NASA, especially with John Glenn on Friendship 7 yeah, and they, his... Uh, and his and his flight into space and everything. Um, some see her as a hero. Uh, she died a couple years ago, but yeah, um, yeah. So, so there's four things right yeah, there. I think um, it. Uh, I, I find it very uh, enlightening because. Um, you could almost say those four things would help anyone improve joy. So I guess um, what is uh, becoming clear that there are a lot of similarities in uh, reality of joy and hope and how to improve joy and hope, you know, in fact, uh, uh, you you said number three was forgive. Yes, yes. And, number three was forgive. Yeah, and also, well, let's go back for a second. Motivation was number one. Motiva you know, yeah, a motivational speech. Speaker. Actually, there are some videos uh, which uh, they have, which are motivational. Which we have. Yeah. Yeah. And and. They're also being claimed to help hope, you know. And spiritual versus religious, you know. And in my opinion, uh, I like to briefly talk about the difference that I understand between religion and spirituality. In fact, I believe that uh, mankind has advanced in science, technology, tech, uh, AI, and everything. But what we have not advanced in is the understanding of spirituality. And I'm not talking about religion. You know, to me, religion is a very basic level of understanding that we can say is a spirituality, but it's really not. It could have a lot of connotation and propaganda, you know, which is based on a religion. Because, right. Uh, if uh, higher power, as you were mentioning earlier, is one, then why we have all these religions who are creating uh, their own methodologies. Uh, so when you go into spirituality, then it loses the essence of religion, but it becomes more pure understanding of human reality. And, and forgiveness also has an element 
uh, which uh, I like to think is part of it, which is act of kindness, because forgiveness is act of kindness. You you being kind to someone who you felt um, you have to get even with or whatever. You right. Know? So that is another form of act of kindness, and act of kindness is the best thing one could do to improve hope and joy because that just makes such a difference and having a hero or a role model or someone you can look up to is again a very uh, simple reality of life which we learn when we went through schools you know the the teachers always talked about that we should always have a role model that we can follow you know it helps us gauge ourselves uh, and, and uh, relate to the direction we are going in. Otherwise, we could be lost, you know. Uh, I kind of, uh, when I talk about direction, heroes, path, uh, so uh, there's a cartoon called Yogi Bear. I don't know if you've ever watched it. <laughs> Very much so, and, yes. And some of them have more of an educational component to it. And, and I, I was fascinated with one of them where it says, uh, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up elsewhere. Now, just think of elsewhere. What is elsewhere? It's like you don't know what it is. Right. So you're better off having a path or a hero or a direction that you can follow than being elsewhere. <laughs> 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 that's dangerous yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, I, I totally agree with you with your uh, research on uh, hope and I see it also uh, correlation or correlated to joy absolutely yeah. so here's a question that I bet you haven't gotten very often uh -huh. so let's see are you ready Liv? I'm ready Who's your hero? Mine. Yeah. Uh, uh, see. Well, see. I have few. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Is that allowed? I don't remember reading that in the research. You're well, allowed to have a few heroes. The, the reason for that is that I have different areas of interest. So uh, the same hero does not satisfy different areas of interest. For instance, okay, I have interest in humanity. So when it, and actually I have uh, started a foundation, which I'm pledging 51% of everything I have, you know. So that uh, aspect of my life or, or uh, interest in my life, uh, have you heard of a, a man called Gandhi? I have indeed. So he's my hero and role model for humanity. That's and, a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I also am an architect, so I practice uh, architecture. And I have a role model there, uh, and his name is Buckminster Fuller. I've heard of Bucky Fuller. Yeah. So, you know, geodesic domes, it is one in Long Beach here. Yeah. He invented that. And it's, an, it's a marvelous uh, way of creating a space with using small, small components, you know. Ingenious. So that, that's my role model for uh, uh, architecture. Then I have a role model for technology. And that's different than those two. And that is Elon Musk, because uh, I feel that, uh, in fact, I've been following people that I believe have been instrumental in uh, 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 giving us a technological advantage, you know. And the first one I came across was Bill Gates, you know, and then Steve Jobs, but now I find Elon Musk to have uh, created um, 
uh, an accomplishment I admire because when he uh, uh, 12 years ago came out and said, I'm going to make an electric car, you know, I said, oh my God, this idiot, everything he learned or earned in uh, eBay or was it eBay he started? Mm -hmm. No. I don't think so. What was the platform? Uh, Bobby, what was, what did Elon Musk start? Pardon? What did he start originally? Uh, it was started with Tesla. Well, PayPal. PayPal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said he uh, cashed out PayPal and then he's going to lose everything in Tesla and go, go home broke because the companies who've been around for 100 years making automobiles. How is he going to conquer it? <laughs> and he amazed me, you know? Yes. He from nothing to become over a trillion dollar valuation and the richest man in the world, uh, I thought was... He's, uh, he's the highest paid CEO in the world. I think in the world. Really? Yeah. Not me? You <laughs> Number two is not far from number one, bro. <laughs> so, uh, so... That to me was, uh, so that's my hero for when it comes to technology. Okay, so, but you've given me a technology, you've given me a architecture, architecture and humanity. you've given me a humanity one. Right. But you, the person, Dr. Joy. Myself. Yourself. Well, I'm made of all those things. So those are the things that I believe and, and I follow because even in my life, you know, those are the areas that I have uh, done well in, you know. I mean, I, I could say there's, there's another area which is that I have excelled in business, but that also follows Elon Musk, you know. Sure. So uh, maybe uh, uh, I am not a... Uh, good example of uh... <laughs> Liv do you have a hero you know I was thinking about this while you're asking him I honestly I haven't found my hero yet I'm on my road to finding my Ooh. hero I'm on my road to find my hero I haven't found my hero okay. yet okay. <laughs> but if we want to get like technical Taylor Swift but she's like music like my music right yeah hero but yeah you know, uh, you'll find one sooner yeah. or later because... Uh, I literally thought about this question actually like a couple months ago and I just sat there. I was like, I really don't know who I like, can look up to right now. <laughs> That's just where I'm so at. So <laughs> here is your uh, kind of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so another part of the study says that with... Um, with teenagers and young or middle-aged adults, hope is a bit easier than it is with the over 60 crowd. Um, because aging often means running up against obstacles that appear unyielding, uh, like recurring health or financial or family issues that just don't seem to go away. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. But... Um, psychologists tell us that hope involves activity, a can-do attitude, and a belief that we have a pathway to our desired outcomes. Hope is the, as I said, hope is the willpower to change and the way power to bring about that, um, bring about that change. And the assumption that a positive outcome is inevitable. You know, so you've already established that there are some commonalities between joy and hope yeah. and all that. And uh, I've been looking at, uh, as part of my humanity foundation and research, um, and things which I'm very passionate about is, uh, obviously, uh, I'm not happy about people having or suffering from depression, anxiety, uh, obesity, or diabetes. Those are top two things. Homelessness uh, also. Mm -hmm. Homeless, but it's not the top, uh, like top two in terms of number of people out there. 
homelessness is a problem. And it is on the upswing I saw in LA County. Absolutely. It and that's 9%. part of my foundation, you know. My foundation supports people with uh, depression, anxiety, uh, diabetes, obesity, homelessness, and incarceration even. Now, um, so I didn't know anything about uh, incarceration, so I asked a uh, chief of police, Braden, <laughs> you know, I said, well, what percentage of people in prisons are illiterate? He says 85%. Now, all of those areas I mentioned, um, illiteracy is one of the foundation of or common elements of all those areas. And even childbirth, birth rate, over 50% of the people who are born to parents who are not ready to have parenting responsibility. You know, um, <laughs> so when I was telling someone that my doctrine is that you cannot date before you have joy school of 50, then you cannot uh, get married before 60 and cannot have a child before uh, 70. So, that's uh, so someone said, look, if you're going to say that, people are not going to download your app. Because <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that are we not realizing what high percentage of children born in this world do not have appropriate parenting? It's a big, it's a big problem. Right. You know, why we have so many issues in this world, and all those things you've been talked about, a lot of it has with illiteracy and lack of uh, nurturing when they were growing up. Because first seven years of a child's age, I mean life, is when the mindset and the uh, uh, character is formed. And if suffered from lack of parenting or nurturing, then wrong way to say it, but the child is already damaged by the time they're seven. And then they will live the rest of their life with, with that baggage that they've created. Yes. So the happiest day when a child is born has the highest level of joy because nothing is in his or her way of joy, you know. As life gets in your way, as you were saying, people over 60 or as age gets higher, you realize how much there is to think about which is in your way of being hopeful or joyful. But as you're early on, and that's what you were saying, you know, teenagers or people younger in age uh, don't seem to have that as a problem, no. not as big of a problem. Right. So as life goes on, from the time we are born to the time we die, it seems we are constantly reducing the level of hope and joy. And Joy Score has a way of bringing that joy back because, you know, uh, you were saying motivation is one of the elements. Yes. So when you have joy score, the first thing it does is motivates you to improve your joy score. And it gives you hope. It gives you joy. <laughs> exactly right. No, that's exactly right. So this study concludes by saying that, you know, we can't eliminate threats to hope right. and to joy. Right. Bad stuff happens. But, um, you know, we can always try to become healthier and happier in our relationships. And we can bring around, bring around that hope and joy by um, boostering our willpower, bolstering our persistence, and finding pathways to our goals and our dreams, and looking for heroes 
um, of hope. And perhaps maybe one day then we'll be a hero to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, the nine areas that we have in our book, which are the chapters, you know, each one of them, I think, um, are uh, helping us with joy, but I think they would also help us with hope. For instance, uh, thoughts, creative actions, self-esteem. Those are the first three, which is part of mind. Yes. Then we go to body, which is fitness, nutrition, and breathing. And life, or we kind of now changing them, by the way, uh, from going from mind, body, life, to we are moving to mind, health, and wealth. Similar, and, and the third one, third domain, is stress, relationships, and wealth, you know. So... I think they all, again, share common interest between joy and hope. And uh, uh, when I talked about talk about wealth in in our sense, it's not money; it's money with good karma or something which builds your life, you know, right. or uh, money with kindness. Uh, so it's a quality of money rather than just money. Right. Because money could be dirty money. You know? Yes. So there we are. So that is it. That's it. We yeah. end on a hopeful note. Yes. We end on a joyful note joyful for today. Joyful and hopeful note. <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining us. We'd love to hear your comments. Check us out on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.